Time then for the latest business news now on the programme. We're going to talk about the British government, actually. It's been giving details about its plans for its future relationship with the EU. And a business editor, Stephen Carroll, is here with all the details for us, Stephen. Stuart, negotiations due to start in the coming weeks between the UK and the European Union. The goal is to have a trade agreement uh, in place by the end of this year, an ambitious goal. But British ministers have begun warning businesses about how things will change. Michael Gove, who's the de facto deputy, de facto deputy prime minister in the UK, says that border checks on goods will be inevitable and that businesses will have to submit extra paperwork for goods entering or exiting the EU. Business groups have warned that the government will need to act fast and install major infrastructure to avoid disruption from January 2021. Meanwhile, when it comes to services, the UK finance minister is seeking what's called permanent equivalence for the city of London to maintain market access after Brexit. That would limit the EU's capability of changing the rules and potentially blocking UK businesses out of EU markets. That opening negotiating position for the UK was revealed by a photo that was taken of a document being carried into Downing Street on Monday. Let's take a look at what's happening on the markets next for you. European shares starting the day in the green. Shares in the French car maker Michelin, uh, tire maker I should say, Michelin are down by 1.8% at the open. That's over fears of falling profits due to a slower car market. Uh, the Italian luxury brand Moncler, its shares are down over 5% as well though after warning of a plunge in Chinese sales affecting their bottom line. Lots of businesses talking about the effect the coronavirus outbreak and the shutdown in China is having on their businesses. This is the picture on the Asian markets a short time ago. The Nikkei in Tokyo closed for a public holiday. The rest of the market's trading up, but we've seen quite a lot of volatility on those Asian markets uh, over fears of what coronavirus will mean for China's economy. Moving on, Uber has failed in its attempt to block a new law offering more protection to gig economy workers in California. A Los Angeles judge rejected claims that the ride-hailing firm, along with delivery service Postmates, were being unfairly targeted by the law. Assembly Bill 5, which came into force at the start of this year, makes it more difficult for companies to classify workers as independent contractors rather than employees with more rights. Now, Donald Trump says he's going to talk very seriously to the European Union about reducing trade barriers for US exports. This sparking fears that the US president may escalate a dispute with the European Union, which could lead to higher tariffs on things like French wine. At the industry's annual trade show in Paris, winemakers are worried. Yuka Roya reports. It's an important venue for deal making for French wine producers. But this year, the ongoing trade battle with the United States is casting a dark shadow. We hope it doesn't last a long time, because if the prices of our products are raised too much, obviously we will lose our market share. What's most worrying is the fact that there's no visibility for the coming months. Unhappy with the EU's subsidies to Airbus that were seen as putting Boeing at a disadvantage, the US government imposed a 25% tariff on a range of European products, including wine. It's now threatening to increase that to 100%. Donald Trump is also threatening to hit French champagne and other iconic products with a 100% import duty in retaliation to France's new digital tax on US tech giants. Those 25% tariffs are already unacceptable. We can't cope with something like that in the long run because it affects a major part of our exports. Some wine producers are really dependent on the US market. The United States is the world's top importer of wine by value buying more than 5 billion euros worth in 2018. France is by far the world's biggest exporter in terms of value. French President Emmanuel Macron has sounded an optimistic note on ongoing negotiations, but damage has already been done. According to the Foreign Ministry, US imports of French wine dropped 44% in November last year from the previous month, after the 25% tariff took effect. Puerto Rico has reached a deal with a major group of creditors which may help to pave the island's way out of bankruptcy. Under the agreement, debts worth $35 billion would be settled for just under $11 billion. Now, the deal still needs to be approved by Puerto Rico's legislature. The US territory is in the fourth year of a financial crisis as it seeks to cut its $129 billion debt mountain. 
Finally, for me, the Singapore Air Show has opened as planned, despite the fears over the spread of the coronavirus. Most Chinese participants in the event cancelled their trip, but up to 40,000 people are expected to attend. The organisers have told industry officials to avoid handshakes in an effort to limit contacts that could transfer the virus. Instead, they've suggested bowing or waving as a greeting. <laughs> Everyone's going to be walking around like this, aren't they? Or with, a, with their hands in their pockets, touch, yeah. perhaps. Either like that or like that, just in case. Thanks a lot, Stephen.